Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is a video on the Moto Z and the Moto Z Force. So what makes these phones special are the fact that they're modular phones. They have detachable components that you can switch around to make the phones do different things. But these aren't the first modular phones we've seen this year. LG had the G5, which was a bit of a miss, but these phones, the Moto phones, are a completely different take on the whole modular phone concept. So let's take a look at how they are as a regular smartphone first. They're currently both Verizon exclusives, but the Moto Z will eventually come in an unlocked version. Off contract, they're around $600 for the Moto Z and $700 for the Moto Z Force. They're pretty expensive, so thankfully the build quality is on point. Everything just feels super solid, the machining on the metal is great, the seams are tight, and there's next to no material flux because it is an aluminum body, even the back. It's actually one of the best built phones I've seen from Motorola. Now the Moto Z is super thin, it's 5.2 millimeters, one of the thinnest you can get on the market right now. The bigger one, the Moto Z Force, is a bit thicker and heavier, but when you use them individually, they're actually both comfortable to use. The buttons on the side are all the same size. They're kind of small and they're positioned a little higher than the Moto X buttons, but because the power button is still textured, I got used to it quickly. The camera hump on the back is one of the bigger ones out there, but these humps are so common now, they've kind of stopped bothering me. If you're wondering about phone wobble from the hump, it's not an issue if you're in portrait mode, but if you're in landscape, yeah, there is a bit of a wobble. Both of the cameras have an aperture of 1.8 with OIS and laser focusing. It can't take the crown from the Samsung phones right now, but it takes some very respectable photos, accurate colors, good dynamic range. The one on the Z Force has a higher resolution at 21 megapixels instead of the 13 megapixels on the Z. But aside from having higher resolution, the image quality looks very similar between them, both in low light and brightly lit environments. The photos that I took in low light aren't amazing. They have quite a bit of noise. And even if I'm on HDR, the image doesn't look great. I did notice that the Z Force has more reliable focusing for macro photos, probably because it has phase detection. The regular Moto Z would hunt for focus a bit more, but yeah, pretty good cameras overall. I wouldn't say that they're strong in low light, but for an everyday shooter, I'm happy with it. It also shoots 4K video. The displays are both five and a half inch quad HD AMOLED panels. Colors are vibrant and the viewing angles are good like all AMOLEDs, but they aren't super bright. In a brightly lit room, the screens can feel a little dim at times. There's standard Gorilla Glass 4 on the Moto Z. The Z Force has Motorola's Shatter Shield, which is guaranteed to be shatterproof, and we've seen that stuff before. It's really durable. The voice quality on the mic seemed good, and the earpiece volume is appropriately loud. It doubles as the mono speaker. It doesn't sound amazing, and I definitely miss the stereo speakers from the Moto X, but it's not bad. The square fingerprint sensor works well, but it's not a home button. I've pressed it so many times this week trying to use it as a home button. I don't love the square shape. I feel like it doesn't really go with the design aesthetic of the phone, but it gets the job done. There's no three and a half millimeter audio jack. You need to use the included adapter to use headphones. There's still a DAC in the phone. It's not in the adapter cable, but it's in the phone itself. And the audio sounds very standard for a smartphone. It's not a super special DAC in there or anything. The dongle is super easy to lose. If you leave the dongle attached to your headphone, it can help, but I did this and I still lost one, so maybe use some tape. System performance is fast. They're both running a Snapdragon 820, so you expect it to be fast, but it does get pretty warm. It's not uncomfortable to hold or anything, but it throttles down when you're running long benchmarks or sometimes when you're playing more demanding games. Basically, if you push the processor hard, it heats up. And once it hits 39 or 40 degrees, the CPU throttles down. And to amp up the problem, if you're using a Moto Mod that covers the back of the phone, like a battery something, now there's another object on the back that also puts out heat and it makes it more difficult for the processor to dissipate the heat. So if you're a hardcore gamer and you want maximum frame rates, I would just keep the phone naked on the back to let that CPU cool off. The Moto Z runs a relatively small battery and using just the built-in battery, I had a tough time getting it to last a full day. It's doable, but it's not easy. The Moto Z Force has a significantly bigger battery and lasting a full day is pretty comfortable. But for both of these, because they have turbocharging and the battery mods, most users should be okay. It's running Android 6.0.1. The standard Motorola tweaks are still there. And as much as I love stock Android, I also like Motorola's version because it's so close to vanilla with some useful things like the twist for camera. And this year, the twist for camera is really fast. A few months ago, when I was trying to use the LG G5 as my daily driver, I remember thinking that eh, maybe modular phones aren't for me. The phone was really cool and fun to play with, but the modular pieces didn't have that polish that I needed in a daily driver. The Moto Mods are really different. 
They're well made and super simple to use. A few magnets securely hold them in place and when you attach them, there's no rebooting or any kind of user requirement. It automatically gets recognized whenever you place them on. The style covers are pretty basic. They're just various covers of different materials. This one's made with real wood. It doesn't have any functionality other than aesthetics. But if you've ever said, hey, phone companies, please give me a thicker phone with a bigger battery. Well, now you can do that. A bunch of companies are bringing out battery options. This one's from Incipio. It has wireless charging capabilities and packs a 2200 milliamp battery in there. And with all of these, you can straight up hot swap the battery in the middle of a phone call. There's no need to turn it off. When you connect it, the Moto Mod will actually fill up the internal battery. I really like these, and I think these are the first hot swappable batteries I've seen on a phone. Now, if you've ever wanted some proper speakers and didn't want to bring an external Bluetooth speaker, you can do that. So at first I thought, why would I want this thing when I already have a good Bluetooth speaker that I really like? But after using it for a while, I'm sold. Even though it makes your phone pretty thick when it's attached, having only one thing to charge and one thing to carry is really nice. It doesn't sound as good as some Bluetooth speakers, but compared to anything on a phone, this thing is fantastic. When you're using Moto Mods, there's a widget that shows the battery level of the mod itself. Some mods can be charged separately, or you can attach the mod to the Moto Z, plug in your USB-C cable, and that will charge up the phone first, and then charge up the mod once the phone is full. Now, if you wanna use mods, you probably won't be able to use a bumper or a case. The device looks good naked, but if you ever wanna change it up, you can easily put on a D-brand skin. The mods still work perfectly. This one is concrete, it's linked below. Okay, the Moto Z and Z Force phones. They both have an aluminum chassis with great build quality, five and a half inch AMOLED screens that have vibrant colors, but they could be a little brighter. There's a single speaker up top, so no stereo sound. They have square shaped fingerprint sensors that are fast. They both have five megapixel front facing cameras. The Moto Z has Gorilla Glass 4. The Moto Z Force has Shatter Shield. On the back of the device, we have a 13 or a 21 megapixel camera. Both are solid shooters. There's also a series of connection points and magnets for all the cool Moto mods. On the inside, we have 32 gigs of storage, upgradable by micro SD, a Snapdragon 820 that is fast, but it can throttle on benchmarks and heavier games, especially if you have a Moto mod attached. Powering them are batteries that are a little short on the Moto Z, but comfortable on the Moto Z Force. And lastly, they both have a water resistance nano coating that should protect it from the rain. So I think Motorola did a really good job on these phones. I've always been interested in modular phones and I've often been disappointed by them. These are the first ones that I've been very impressed by. They're really well executed. The mods themselves are really well done. The mechanism of how everything works is really intuitive and simple to use. And the best thing is that Motorola wants these mods, the ones that exist today, they want them to be able to work on future Motorola phones. They want it to have like an extended life like that. That is awesome. That shows commitment from Motorola for like a long-term investment in this whole modular phone thing. If you're interested in modular phones, take a look at the Moto Z, you might like it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. See you guys next time.